Hello YouTube. Okay, today just want to talk about a couple of things. Um, first one is uh, I installed the signals on the, the North Platte route the other day, but I didn't explain much about it. Uh, they're quite a complicated bunch and not very easy to understand, but I just want to understand, um, explain a bit more about how I use signals. Um, then we'll follow on and do a just a build session with grades. I know grades can be very difficult, but I'll show you how I do it. It still gets messy, but uh, you'll see how I do it. But anyway, let's let's have a look at the, um, setting up signals and, and using signals to get a, a reasonable um, level of predictability with them. So I'll, I'll just delete these ones that I had in here. So we've got uh, a set of crossovers here. Um, this is on the Powder River Basin. Um, Powder River Basin route. And um, so we'll just install um, some number six signals. I use jointed rail uh, signals. They're, they're really quite good. I've actually um, made some of my own but use their script and I do do use um, their ones sometime as well uh, namely there's because there's a few bugs in 2010 that I had to overcome to um, so I had to kit bash them a bit to make them per perform properly but anyway we'll we'll show you what we do so Basically, what we're setting up here is, is uh, six signals are your, your diverge signals, so they're two-headed. Um, the tops for the for the main line straight through, and the bottom signal, uh, the bottom set of three, is for your diverging track. So here we have, on this right-hand running, we have a uh, a left diverging track, and if we happen to be using the other side due to some reason maintenance away or uh, a crew run out of time and the using the opposite track um, we have a right diverge here so we'll start off and do this right diverge so we want to use a left uh, a signal that's on the, the the left side so we'll select a left right diverge there we go signal there now this is one that I use that's displaced a bit. Um, this is to solve a, a bug in 2010. 2010 trains will drive right up to the signal, right up to the point. I believe in, in trains 12 and in Tane that um, this has been fixed. However, we have a workaround for 2010. So what happens, it's displaced and where my, where my mouse um, is pointing is where the train will stop and the signal's been displaced a little bit so we'll just place it where they have their you can see on the google earth image that um that's where the signal and this is obviously the shadow so we have it placed in the right place now this is quite simple we don't have to adjust um jointed rail script at all on here um, obviously the straight path through is the left hand side so trains will will act accordingly. Now on the other side we want to place a left diverging signal. Again, same principles. Just about got it in the right spot. Here we go. And we'll just add ladders to those just to make it just to make it look good. And, and a displaced one on that side as well. And we'll just adjust it back to there we go. Now we need to adjust this number six signal here as 
we have a, a junction in front of the junction that it's actually signaling. It's signaling this for a left diverge, but we have this junction in front of it, so we have to write that into um, jointed rails script that they have with their signals. So here we have it. It's a right diverge, so we want to know. It says we want to know the the straight through path, so we want to make this left. So it's a left is straight through, and then we head to the the at the next one for the next junction ahead and it's a right so okay so this junction here is set left for the straight path and this one here is set right for the straight path okay let's place a locomotive anyone doesn't matter doesn't matter which direction it is it's all the same so there we go um, we have a green for, for straight through. Now we'll switch the, the junctions uh, for it to verge to the other track. And there we go. It's a clear path to run through the diverge on the other track. We'll just click that one over. See if we can get that one. Yep, there we go. And we'll just swap it over and it should be the same on the other track. Should be. Signals can be a little unpredictable. And there we have it correct there as well. So that's all it takes to set up a, a, a number six signal. And it should give you pretty reliable performance. Put everything back the right way. There we go, and we have a green. Right. We'll get rid of that locomotive so it doesn't cause further problems. So now we'll just go further back down the track here and we'll install a number five signal. Now a number five signal is different. Uh, a, a number four is just a signal, a, a standal sing, single head signal that is a, um, these are a set of number fives, is a is a signal that you, you cannot pass. It will not let you pass. Actually, I've gone too far here. Beg your pardon. A number five signal. Here we are. I've just been running one as a... We'll get rid of that. A number five signal, even though it shows red, the train will pass it. Um... It's what's called a permissive signal. So it's a signal that has a has a plate on the bottom. And you're allowed to pass the signal, depending on the railroad, various different rules. Usually it's half speed or sometimes quarter speed or stop in the distance ahead of you. So half the distance ahead of you, depending on what your railroad states. But anyway, here we're using some double-headed fives. It's a five signal each way, and there's a second component to it. We'll just add that in. Can't really see it because of the. But what we'll do is we'll turn the turn the UTM tiles off, and we will add them all around the right way. There we go. See the second piece on the bottom. Has its has a sig it's kind of like two signals stuck together. I'll just pull it out and show you. Although we want to see it from the other side. There it is, from the side. There you go. It's just two signals put together. So there we go. So that gives a five signal each way. So a train will will, will come in and slow down to to half or third speed or whatever 
railroad rules are and then we'll continue on in 2010 it carries on at the, at the normal mainline speed which is actually a bug and an error but uh, there are ways to to um, overcome that and we will cover that in a later video if anybody's interested side displace that's what we want and we'll just put the letters on these hello that's because we're in the wrong way. So I keep it locked. It saves me crying later. Okay, and then we have the letters on it. Now, train's going either way, and these are the placards on the bottom. It means it's a permissive signal and you can pass it, even though it's red. The other signal we get is as I said, it's a number four, which is uh, escapes me, um, which is you cannot pass. There we are, just a normal, just a normal four signal, and um, you cannot pass. It has no placard down here. So that's basically how I set up my signals. Those are the basically the three signal types that I use um, I do have used the three headed JR signals but trust me I have no idea what the proper aspect or the proper way to work them is all I know is they show a yellow and the trains slow down they show a green and they go and they show a red and they stop and that's basically all the AI does anyway it has no um, view of any other advanced, more advanced aspects, signal aspects, so um, that's all, all you have to worry about. Uh, we'll just pop over to the, uh, there's another set of fives, we'll just pop over to the um, North Platte route and we'll run down there and just have a look at some of the, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll just run down there and have a look at um, all the different signals that are in use there. S still just basically these three. Okay, here we are on the uh, on the North Platte route and um, yep, this is a genuine gantry setup that, they, that they've got there according to Google Earth. But you can see what happens. Here's our number six signal except this time it's a, uh, a gantry a gantry signal uh, for a right diverge here that uh, we set up just before and these are uh, the number five signals that just allow traffic to carry on through warning traffic ahead and um, this is the mileage that um, that's usually put on the track it's 295 miles or 295.9 miles and it's the uh, uh, main three this is main four that's a number four obviously it's a, a must stop for uh, this junction here if you have a train crossing over going back the other way we have all number fives carrying down down towards North Platte now I believe this is a bridge that uh, a signal bridge that goes right through. However, my signal bridges are not long enough. I have to make a new one, so I'll just run with two of these in the main time. In the meantime, and um, I will uh, sort it out at a future date. Again, mileage twenty nine, two hundred ninety four point four. Main one, main two, main three, main four, and same on the other side. And these are just a couple of new additions. Um, I didn't notice these the other day on uh, Google Earth, but when I was fishing around altering some stuff, um, lo and behold, I spotted these. So I've added these. So these are obviously a six left diverge for here, and a six left diverge for down here further, and a six left diverge here for down here even further. So. Um, it sets that up 
this is all near as I can make out too because you can't actually see on Google Earth it's not like they have a road running next here that you can check up and see like say on the other side of North Platte again a, a number six um, for a left diverge up here and two number fours for must stop for if there's a train blocking these these will show as the train must stop carrying on down I have yet to add the extra for the for the double heads and these are starts look where it all gets messy crossover set up left diverge left diverge uh, it'll be for a right diverge further up there I hope you can see it and that'll uh, whatever it is for a here we are left diverge here so as you can see it does get all quite uh, it's a bit better set up but uh, I have to adjust the height of the it's on this invisible track here to get the right spacing so I'll have to just lift it a bit or to um, get rid of the gaps in here but uh, and a number four on the side here to hold traffic I uh, also noticed there's a few other signals just down in here that I'll have to add as well but anyway that just gives you some idea so there's basically those four signals number four number six left and right diverge and your number five for just carrying on permissive signal okay now I'll show you the messy bit of uh, how I do grades okay for doing this grades session um, this is just one of the um, references that I'll, I'll use um, we're going to be starting in here at Narco Junction um, there's a bridge just here and this here is the where, where my mouse is pointing um, that you can see there um, this this line here is the grade <coughs> excuse me Sorry about that. Um, yeah, th this is the grade that um, is present. Um, so it just gives you some idea as to what they're, while not 100% accurate, um, it's actually not too far off. Um, it, it is a bit of a mess to start with, but uh, this just gives you an idea. This is the, the grade profile of basically what we'll be following, 1%, 0.6%. 1% heading uh, north um, so we'll start in here and work our way forward I don't know how far we'll, we'll get or do um, uh, just a few other things these are the mile posts so uh, as you're going through the map uh, just the mile posts are there um, they don't exactly match up this but it gives you some idea as to what's happening and this is the speed limit at the top here and if you want more of these fog charts, here it is at the bottom, www.fogchart.com, um, a great resource. Hello guys. Right, this could be the, uh, a bit of a long video, but uh, if you're at all interested in um, how to do grades on, on DEM maps, um, I'm going to just show how I do it. Um, it's a it's a real nightmare. There's no particular um, method. Just a few tricks that you can use to help yourself. But generally, it's uh, pretty messy and it's pretty horrible. Um, it's not an enjoyable part of doing these things. But as you can see, this is uh, what you end up. I've laid the track as you've seen. Um, I've been through now and added. Um, signals and, and all the railroad type furniture this here is um, Narco Junction um, where it turns off here to where we're looking north at the moment um, this is where it branches off to go to the North Antelope Rochelle mine um, so I've picked this place to start um, by 
I'll throw up a um, a picture of the fog chart from um, fogchart.com. Check them out if you want a closer look. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, the, I, I've picked this place to start because this here is a bridge. I haven't put it in yet. There's no point putting it in yet, is there? Um, bridges don't go well with... Um, with working grades so you tend to add them afterwards okay uh, a couple of things to start with is th this is all a single track you, you know you can get your your double track and your triple track that come in a in a pre-formatted template that is very hard to work with um, when doing grades because you cannot say like you have a, on a curve you have to say two single pieces of um, track you can't um, you can't adjust the um, the the pre-formatted double track or triple track with a um, with the grade tool so um, where are we here we are with, with the grade tool here um, so it, it makes things very difficult that's why I like um, just using that um, those double track and triple track stuff is just templates and I replace it with single track afterwards when it's all laid out and, and looking nice so um, I, I tend never to use that in the actual finished layout so but anyway th the reason I chose to start here is at this river, river bridge is that obviously with the river it's the lowest point so we have a 1% grade going north and we have a 1% grade going um, up Logan Hill to the to the south so um, it's a it's a good place to start so <laughs> well yeah, relatively speaking but anyway um, so we will we will start off it's a lot of uh, trial and error um, push and shove to uh, get things right so anyway I'll just uh, start and work away and you can see the the issues that are huh. no trains gonna run over that so anyway we will just give it a go so it, and I'll just ramble on eh So we'll just pick a height to start with and see how we go. And we'll pick a 1% grade. And we'll just see what it looks like. As I said, I've got the fog charts here. I've also got um, Google Earth open. So at the moment, I'm just adding a 1% a grade just to see how it goes up the hole. Go into naked mode here. Hello, what have you been doing? It's like I mucked it. You might we'll sort that out later on. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff you can get into with, uh, but we won't worry about that too much. It, uh, it sorts itself out in the long run. Okay, this is a 1% grade all the way up to here, so mm, we're a little bit high here. Big fill. Now I've already looked on um, on Street View here, and this is a big fill in here. Perhaps not this high, but uh, yeah, there is a big fill in here from what you can see, so it's a matter of of checking that kind of thing out just to see where you can go from so we'll run a 1% grade the other way now the 
this could turn into an epic fail as well. <laughs> could be chuck the toys out of the cot situation here, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, this is getting worse, isn't it? But, oh, hang on, that was a whoopsie. Uh, another thing I do here too is that uh, not so important on on single track when you're just doing the grade with a single track, but when you've got multiple tracks like this, um, you know you're going into an area where it's a, a, a bit of a mess here with junctions and uh, all sorts of bends and curves going everywhere. It pays to 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 get a sort of like a reference point after that place where you line up all three um, spline points. Uh, in a line so that the track acts the same you don't get a different curve like if you use the straightening tool um, you know you're using a straightening tool here so and this is all going to be the same height right across here so you're going to get an even curve here but if you have these spline points at different places and some of this may be curve track and some of it may be um, you know not not have the straightened tool on it um, it becomes all different heights and it looks real rubbish so I like to wherever there's junctions lights or something like that um, I like to put a, a sort of like a referencing thing across it so that the track all becomes the same I also like to isolate the the signals uh, but well, I'll show you that when we get to it it's rather than ramble on oh. More thinking, uh, more thinking and less talking, eh? What's going on here? That's better. My multitasking skills are not too, not too great. Yeah, so, you know, we have a 1% grade going here, which the fog chart shows, and uh, Logan Hill's quite a known place for rail fans. And uh, Logan Hill does bring coal trains to their knees. Um, when it comes to uh, going up a grade, so but one percent, this is just not working, is it? So okay, decision time. What do we have to do here? So I don't think one percent is going to work. So this is our bridge. And we are going to lower. Okay. Right. I'll lower this down. I, I, I think I'll edit this video a bit so that you don't have to go through all this boring stuff of push and shove, push and shove, push and shove. So, so we'll actually lower it quite a bit here. And we'll give it another go. See you when it's done. Okay, this is starting to look a little better. Um, it. We'll just have a look. Um, there's a road over here that you can see from uh, Street View across here, and there's there's quite a big um, fill in here, so. We're actually below the ground here, so it's not really good. It needs to go. It needs to go up a bit, so. But then we're still way above, so we're going to have to change the grade on the other on the 
other side, although this is fierce, but it's not too bad. But here we start to really get above the ground. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna I'll end this video. I'll just stop things here and uh, I'll push and shove and push and shove for a bit and um, we'll come back when I have it. Uh, you, you see the issues and um, I'm just going to play with heights now and um, and see if I can push things into um, into making it uh, acceptable. Here's the bridge and here's the problem that you see with the pictures is uh, because there's a bend in the terrain and probably the satellite's not exactly directly overhead, it's slightly skewed um, you get a it bends the thing like this, so it doesn't look that good, really, does it? So, uh, pretty hard to lay track. My other theory is uh, it might be dark matter. Yeah, right. Anyway, see you soon. Okay, we're back. Decision time. I think this is not too bad now. I've raised it back up to roughly where it was before and um, I think it's a better way to go um, more checking out of um, street view there is a big fill here and this line is quite high so uh, yeah I've raised it back up and I think I'll run with this it's not too bad it's a I've reduced it to a 0.6 grade um, up here to the other junction with the rest of uh, North Antelope Rochelle so um, this is a 0.6 grade up here this is a fill in here and then here it starts at uh, at a 1% this is a this is a cut in here as you can see there's a, there's a road here that's got a good street view from it so And then it's one percent from here. Which is quite a good uh seems to follow the terrain not too bad with uh lots of, I, I this is getting to be a, a bit of a I don't like to have my cuts too big because it's uh just doesn't look right, but you want to stay with roughly a one percent grade up here. And we're heading into the fill so what I'll do now is we'll just run along and from here what we'll do is we'll just put in a in a mark just as we know where we are and we'll just run with a 1% grade for a while and and see what happens now I like to double click these grades for a while because it, it it seems like the first click just puts a, a rough height on it and then it makes a finer adjustment on a second click. So you watch your first one, second one. Ah, call me Laura. We'll do a little bit further up here. Eh? And I'm still a liar. Now this is getting ridiculous now. Yeah, there was a second button there. This will show it. One. See that second. So I always like to give it two clicks. But anyway, we're getting way out of control here. There's no way they're going to put a fill in this high. So. But I should have some mile posts around here somewhere too. Um. But yeah, this is no way this is 1%, is it? So, alright, we'll see what it's got. So it looks like this is a, a cut. It doesn't quite match the, the terrain, does it? But that's where Google Earth says it is. So... 
Let's just drop it down to about there. What does that look like? Hmm. Okay. So that's point eight, isn't it? So we'll go back down here and just change that first little bit of grease track. No, it's not lights. did move wasn't it back to my favorite button the undo button undo again is it? <laughs> so, okay, even though it says 1%, no way is it 1%, is it? So, we will just go to plan B, eh? Use the height adjusting tool. Gives you a real roller coaster. But then this is a bit of a roller coaster along here anyway because the it's a um, it's a west to east um, slope, so all the drainage runs east to west. So and the track is north to south orientation, so you're going across all the drainage challenge channels so uh, you know it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster this line anyway with ups and downs the fog chart shows that anyway so ups and downs so anyway we'll see what we got here yeah, we got a one percent here And a 2%, that's no on. 0.4. About a 1%. Yeah, we got a real dip here, eh? There's our 8%, 8 percent eight percent that we come up the hill at. No way you have a it's gonna be at least that that's zero. That's no great at all. Another thing that you can do is um, is okay. We go from let's say we go from here. Get out of the, the range of those. Right, we'll run from here. Just check the grade like this over long. Yeah, see, we're about a 1%. So 
So covering the whole. So okay. Okay. Zero point eight zero. The microphone's in the road. Sorry about that. Does it work? It just doesn't, does it? Undo button. Wish I had an undo button in life. And that brings it back to zero, doesn't it? Yep. One point zero from now. Yeah, well. nine grade on it and see what happens, eh? There's <laughs> no way. No, no way. Nah. Where is it? There it is. Find the spline point. As you can see, grades are a proper pain in the backside. So how's that? Oh, okay. So this is actually a decline. Okay, time for a break. Time for some research. Be back shortly, guys. Okay, we're back. So, I just did a little bit more research, and yeah, no, it's exactly right. Uh, I made that a 0.87 grade. Uh, secret is, is here. Um, Here we are. Mile post zero six nine. Mile post zero six nine on my fog chart says it's the top of the climb. So the you go. All that all that oh, sorry about that. All that brain farting for nothing, eh? Now I've lost my mile post. Here he is. So yeah. What I'll do here is uh, is we'll do that. And according to the fog chart, we have a 1% de decline, which is uh, the ungrade, which is um, exactly what that invisible track there showed. So, it's all good. And we'll just drop this a bit too. Hmm, 
And here we'll start the... I'll tell you what, we're going to... Just jumped all the way out of it and, and carry on. Okay, we'll just lower this down and see what we get. see how we go as you can see grades are a, a real pain in the backside lots of pushing and shoving so when you see something like that uh, North Platte map if you've looked at that and after I've done the grades and everything looks all nice and neat and smooth but you didn't see all the uh, tearing one's hair out as the whole spread of tracks across the whole way and then you use this tool here that raises the terrain to the thing and it wipes over um, things so it's yeah it can become pretty pretty frustrating and um, looks all nice in the end but uh, yeah a bit of angst and a bit of few choice words. Okay, we're going down one percent now. Let's see how it looks. This is uh, easy compared to North Platte. I said this map's uh I'm quite enjoying this build. It's uh just going along quite nicely. It uh seems to flow quite well. So I'll just run it all at one percent. And just see what we look like. It's all looking a little bit high, but we can. It's still holding about the same height above. Oh, it finishes. There must be a mile post around here somewhere. Here we are. What are we? 73. I'll just check on my fog chart. Yep, that's coming up to the crossing there. It's still on a 1% decline though, so. Should still be a strong. See, so we're getting down below here, aren't we? So we'll just keep going and have a look and see how it looks a little bit further down. It's uh, only worrying about one track here because when it's all done, you just go along and you know, there's your height there, and you just hit it with the height tool, and she's all going to be look nice and smooth. It's no point chasing after every every track here. You'll be here for a month of Sundays. So we're disappearing underground now on one percent. Goes down to. Mile post seventy five. So it must be mile posts are not quite right. Well, it depends on what you look at. If you look at the BNSF timetable, they're not too far out, but to the fog chart they're uh let's say not exactly accurate, but that's what uh that's what Mr Fogchart dot com says, uh full of mistakes, so hey I can live with that not a problem I'd rather have those fog charts than not okay 075 up there apparently that's where it's supposed to but then we've hold on, we've just got a bend in this haven't we no we haven't huh. no, it's not right anyway but that's about where it's supposed to stop 
but it doesn't look like it to me. It looks like it stops up here. But again, could be the a mistake in the. Oh, we'll just take that one. It could be a mistake in the fog chart. So. Seven four. Seven three. See a seven three should really be down here somewhere according to the fog chart. It might. Yeah. So. It does need to be lowered a bit, doesn't it? I think from here minus forty forty climb. Yeah, I think we'll just reduce this a little. See what that looks like. Start one percent downgrade here. Eh? I always actually like doing grades. Um, climb rather than descending. But, uh, I don't know. Just personal preference, but uh, definitely climbing works better for me. So anyway, this is how I do grades. It's just endless pushing and shoving and and adjusting and it's just a real pain. So what I'll do now is um, I'll stop this video. Well, stop the video here and I'll see you guys shortly. But I'll just go through now and um, push and shove for the next six hours and and uh, come back and show you what it's like when it's all done, eh? Save you all uh, the bad language. See you soon. Okay, we're back. Uh, pushed on and done the grade all the way to Shawnee Junction, actually. It uh, did take a while, but it actually went quite well. So, um... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with what's happened here. So just uh, I'll show you what I do now. Is um, well now that I've got the grade on the one track, um, it's just a matter of uh, running through using the height tool, um, getting the height of the spline on that that one grade that we've done and just applying it to all the other grades here so use the, the grade tool minus one percent so we'll stick that and just for that short little yuck in there well this is what I call a yuck we got the See how we got a nice, uh, uh, nice sleepers spacing and size in here, and then uh, because it's such a short distance, it gets like this. So, but uh, you just got to live with it. Same with the junction coming off to the right here. We'll just hit that and get that right. 
Here we go. Carry on. This is why it's good to have this this line of um, splines here. This is the one we've done. The important one. That's one percent back the other way, sure is. But, uh, when you're adjusting these splines, it uh, you take a point halfway between the two spline points. If you press, um, if you hit hit the with the grade tool on this side of it, you will get the grade. This the spline point stays the same. Um, if you want to go this side of the halfway, you'll get this point will stay the same. The spline point will stay the same, and this one will adjust to the height. So you always put it closest to the spline point that you want to the grade to be. I guess that's the main bit of using uh, the grade tool, really. Across the bridge, we haven't done the bridges yet. It's flat, but you'll find there's a. Actually, when you put the bridges in, it might uh, cause a few issues and might have to redo things here a little bit. Uh, that's because the, the bridge doesn't bend, whereas this track will actually see has got a little bend in it. So, uh, which if you put a, a, a straight, a straight bridge that went in here that doesn't hasn't got that curve in it, um, obviously this track here through here is going to bend, so it will alter things a little, and we'll need a little bit of push and shove to to make it right. Did I just do that? Yes, I did. But anyway, that's. I'll just come around here and do it here. That's basically all that uh, I've done through the whole route. Is just got that one track um, with a grade. It actually pretty much in the end ended up grading itself because of the low points through to the high points. And you want to keep to about a 1% grade because that's about what it is. Um, you had to have be at certain heights at certain places to make the grade so um, it didn't give much option so it actually worked out quite good I don't know how accurate it is with all the the cuts and everything but um, cuts and fills but a lot of it you can't see through um, Google Earth so or Street View rather from the other end and we got one on this side so long as you hit the so you don't really want to do that when there's a long thing like this there's always a little bit of discrepancy in it the, the spline point will be wrong so And should be minus six, minus point six, and it is. And we'll just hit that there. There was a little bit of movement there. And because it's slightly different, you just use the longest piece of track and it won't um, show anything. See how we've got this bit of a yuck here? really want to get that but that's been caused by this here being uh, slightly lower than what it should be so you'll find that once we hit 
this. There you go, nice and tidy. So we'll look at that. Sorry if I'm making you sick here, but there uh, we are. Right, now we've done this, what I'll do is, um, hopefully this here will, will show a problem, because these have got two spline points in here, the bend and the track will actually be just a little bit different to, sorry about that, uh, a little bit different to um, the bend in this track, so it's going to cause, ideally what needs to happen is spline points go across here and here, here and here, so the curves and the track are all the same. So hopefully this will demonstrate the issues that you get. But we'll just go through and flatten it, just so you get an idea of, of how it all goes. It's using the rise terrain track to the, terrain to the track either takes it down or, or brings it up. So here we are, this is, the, this is the issue here. Because we have two spline points that are not matched in the center track, the, the bend in the track is slightly different, so you get a bit of a curve in this track here. Now, because it's... Um, because of these, th it just causes a different bend, and you get this kind of a carry on. So you press this, and it's yuck. Press it's back, it's okay. So things are obviously screwed up. So we'll just have a quick look here. That's 60, that's 26. There's something's wrong here. No, this is a different reason why. There you go, talking a whole lot of rubbish again. But um, yeah, that basically can be the cause of some issues like that. That wasn't the case in this case, but um, that is the common issue for if you get spline points that don't match across the tracks, you do get that, that kind of effect. So we haven't got it here, but... See what we got now. So we press that center, uh, that one like we were before, and we're not getting that coverage effect. too sick. Yeah, so there we go, that's basically it. I'll give you oh, my uh, my mile post is sunk, but that'll that'll just pop back up when that uh, like when we go out of scene and then you come back into scene again the, the program updates um, 
the terrain and it'll be popped back up so there's nothing to worry about there but anyway there we go we get a not too bad sort of a a grade it's a grade of 0.6 okay I'll just uh, remove the textures and uh, and show you what we got okay here we are textures removed so this is what we end up with but, uh, yeah I don't know what that's doing on there obviously it hasn't adjusted but uh, I'll fix that or it'll correct itself And that's what we uh, just did. So, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll be pushing on with uh, with uh, doing the rest of the crossovers in this and doing the grades. Uh, next video, um, I'm going to run a train. So, uh, see you then. Cheers, guys. Actually, I'll just uh, I'll just run up to Shawnee Junction, and uh, just as a fly through, if you want to hang around. Bill, <coughs> excuse me, this is Bill. This is the Progress Rail car shops.
you notice the uh, small pausing as we're going along and you're getting that uh, jump while the next bit of terrain loads um, this is on a on a normal hard disk it's not on a SSD when it's on a SSD you don't get that uh, you don't get that jump it just happens to be this installation I have on a, on a normal hard drive Uh, not right. Yeah, here's a few little bits that will get picked up over time. This is coming up Shawnee Junction. Have the UP going to the left down to North Platte and the BNSF off here to the right to uh, Bridger Junction and Orange Junction Right, there you go Cheers